Bhaktivinanda Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. We are coming together to remember his divine pastimes, his glories, his, his mantra. And we are also remembering our many years sitting here together in this very place next to the lotus feet of our beloved Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, where he led us in this glorification of our beloved spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada. And so, in memory of his contribution to our relationship with our Srila Prabhupada, we are continuing in this most auspicious uh, gathering in the Kartik month, our Srila our Gurudev, he would encourage all of us to come together and from the core of our hearts to remember our Gurudev and to glorify him to the best of our ability. So on this day, all of the disciples present, many of his Diksha disciples present in our assembly, and also many of our senior uh, sannyasis and devotees will be called upon today to recount the glories of Srila Prabhupada. So this day for us is extremely important and very special for all devotees, all devotees throughout the world. Why? Because this divine personality, he was chosen by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and sent here to this world to perform a very great contribution and a very great mission to bring the holy names of Krishna to every single corner of this earth planet and to bring the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gauravani, to the doorstep of every soul in this world, every Jiva soul. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he predicted that in the very near future, there will be a very great general, Senapati, of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who will come into this world and he will perform this great service to spread this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all throughout the world. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, he predicted this. He told, Pritivite yacha nagarani gram sarvatra prachar hoibe morna. He predicted that in every town every village on this earth planet, my name will be heard. They will know me. So, how that prediction would be fulfilled? Our great Acharyas, they paved the way. Our Srila Bhaktivinoda Tagore, he wrote Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his life and precepts in English language. And of course, he wrote all the great important literatures to properly establish Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission in the modern day. How to establish the Gauravani and how to present it according to this modern condition in Kali Yuga. And it was by his great inspiration that now, for the first time in history, the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be taken across the ocean to Western world. And he wrote this small little book telling the life pastimes in very brief summary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he was descended in Navadvip Dham, in Mayapur Dham, how he grew through his childhood, performed many beautiful pastimes, 
and how he took sannyas later, how he started the Samkirtan movement, how he traveled all throughout India, how he was the Eastern Savior, he called him. Just like he likened him to Jesus Christ of the West, because the Western world knows him to be like the Savior. But Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur called Gauranga Mahaprabhu the Eastern Savior. So he introduced Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and then in the second half of that book, he introduced the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what was that? Sri Daskul Tattva, the ten essential principles of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy. And he explained it very simple and very clear. So he sent two copies, maybe more, but at least to two different locations. He sent copies of this book, one to Canada, uh, one university, and one to London. Uh, so in this way, now, the great treasure chest of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings will be opened wide to the world, beginning with this small little book. And as I said, he predicted that in the future, a great personality would come who would take these teachings throughout the world. Then, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he prayed to Gauranga Mahaprabhu, please send one of your own, your own associates from the spiritual world. And that prayer of Bhaktivinoda Thakur was fulfilled in the personality of Nitya Lila Prabhishta, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada. That great personality took the teachings of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and he disseminated them. He started the great mission, Sri Gauri Amat, and he established temples all throughout India, and even in foreign lands. He sent his preachers, and that great personality, he, in a miraculous way, uh, he gathered together an army of great Vaishnavas, pure Vaishnavas, who would go the length and breadth of the Indian continent and start so many temples and establish the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this Indian subcontinent. And then in 1932, or somewhere around that time, he also sent his disciples to the Western countries so that now they would preach the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they went and they did their best Srila uh, uh, Bhakti Hridai Bhan Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Sarang Goswami Maharaj, two great uh, preachers, and Bhakti Pradeep Tirtha Maharaj, great preacher, disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So at that time and place, they made their attempt, and something they accomplished, but not very they well established the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So after some years, the Gaudiya Mad had went through great difficulty, and our Param Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, he paved the way again to revive the preaching mission of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and he established Sri Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti. And who was the co-founder of that mission, our Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, when he was still in his householder life. He was one of the three founders, along with Param Guru Dev. Uh, and the two of them, they fully agreed how this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu should be again promoted, and how it should be spread. So Srila Bhakti Prakyan Keshav Maharaj, he preached very vigorously. We know from the biography of Param Gurudev how he preached tirelessly and established so many temples in Bengal and also sent his preachers here to this place in North India. He sent our beloved Gurudev, Nitilila Pravishta Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj to come here and to establish the preaching mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Hindi language, the national language of India, and to translate all the books of our Goswamis, the most important books of our Gaudiya Vaishnava Charjas. So then, uh, 
Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Also in 1921, there was a very important day when our spiritual master, our Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, when he was a very young householder, he came to one meeting in Calcutta. Actually, he had grown up in a Vaishnava family. His father was a pure Vaishnava, Gaur Mohan Dei. And he was raised uh, as a devotee, a Vaishnava, taught how to play Pradanga, taught all the kirtans. And he was very much attached to worshipping Lord Jagannath. Even he observed Jagannath Rath Yatra in his childhood. Uh, and then he was sent to the British universities and schools at that time in India. And at that time also Mahatma Gandhi, oh he was preaching his mission, uh, his movement, non-violence, non-cooperation with the British government to try to overthrow them. And at that time all the intelligentsia, all the, the youth of India, they were following that movement. But our uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj as a young householder at that time in university, his desire was that Gandhi would fulfill his, uh, his statement that if they receive independence from the British government, they will establish the teaching of Bhagavad Gita in all schools in India. So in this way, with the motivation to reestablish Vedic culture, the knowledge, the great knowledge of India, and overthrow this foreign uh, uh, governments. So he was following this Gandhi movement. So one day, one of his friends requested him, Oh, Abhai Babu, his name was Abhai Charande. Oh, Abhai Babu, you should come to see one very great Vaishnav personality. Oh, he is a great preacher and he has started one preaching mission, Gaudiya Mat. But our Abhai uh, Babu, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he was not interested. Why? Because he had seen in his life from his childhood so many sadhus, and he had seen how there were so many varieties of sadhus who were mayavadis, impersonalists, sahajiyas, and not true representatives of the culture of pure Vaishnavism. So he had some doubt. I'm not so interested to go. But this friend of his told him, no, you must come. This person, this sadhu, no, no. He's not like the others. You will see, he is very different. So when they came there, finally he agreed to come. And they came there to that small room in Calcutta. And when they entered into the room, which was filled with various people coming to hear from him. He was along with a small group of his friends from university, all dressed in white khadi, the symbol of the followers of Gandhi. So when they bowed down to the respected saintly person, immediately he began to speak to them. He said, oh, you are all very educated young. Uh, you should take this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you should preach this message everywhere. So at that time, our Abhai Charanaravinda, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he tells the story that when he heard this instruction from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, at that time a doubt came in his mind and he challenged him. And he said, how is this possible for us to preach this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because we are a dependent nation. We have been subjugated by foreign powers. And we have been ruled by them for uh, decades and decades. So who will listen to us? All throughout the world there are very great independent nations. America, Europe, everywhere. Why they will listen to us? First we have to gain independence, because that was the mood at that time, independence, Gandhi movement. So then, at that time, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, 
he answered him in such a powerful way and told him that this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu it is completely transcendental it has no it is not affected at all by any external circumstance no political situation economic situation nothing of this external world can affect the preaching mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu therefore you should take this message and preach it everywhere it will be good for you and good for those who hear from you and at that time uh, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, hearing his Guru Maharaj for the first time, he said, oh, I was very, very impressed. He says, now I have met that person in whose hands this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is properly situated and who can spread this mission. And after that, he realized that he was very happy that he was defeated in his argument by this great saintly person and he began to reflect oh every day for months and years he reflected oh I have met such a great saintly person so and he tells the story that actually I met him at that time and although I was not initiated by him actually I was because I fully accepted him in my heart of hearts so in this way the connection between these two personalities began from the very first meeting giving this instruction that you should take this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preach it to the whole world, to the English speaking world and that became the life's mission of Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj so how that happened it is a wonderful amazing story how he went through his householder years and how he prepared himself and how he wrote to his Guru Maharaj just before his departure in 1936 and he asked him my dear Guru Maharaj uh, you have so many thousands of disciples and I am also one of them so many of your disciples are brahmacharis, sannyasis and they are able to give full service to you but I am a householder so I am requesting you what service can I do for your lotus feet? And then Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur wrote his final letter back to Srila Swami Maharaj. And he wrote him the same message that he told him in their first meeting in 1921, 15 years earlier. He said, he said, whenever you are able, if you ever are able to get any money, you should print books and disseminate this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preach this message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in English language. So after that, uh, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj began to pursue this order in earnest and he began one magazine in English language called Back to Godhead. And he began to write the articles for this magazine in English language. He began to perform, uh, print the magazine and do everything necessary. Even he took the magazine uh, to various places in public, even sitting in tea stalls and trying to distribute his magazine back to Godhead to different individuals. And he continued this for many years. And finally, his householder years came to an end and he became determined that now he will leave household life. Actually, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur appeared to him in dreams. And he told us that even in his early householder years, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur would come to him and tell him in dream, you should take sannyas. But at that time he said, oh, he was horrified. And he used that word. Uh, it was frightening to him. And always he thought that I should follow this order of my Guru Maharaj to get money. I will be businessman and I will make so much money. Even his astrology chart told that he would be one of the most wealthy men of India. And so therefore he thought that he would do like this. But in the course of his householder years, his business endeavors uh, were very successful and again failed. And then again successful and again failure. And finally, uh, 
There is one verse in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yasyaham anukrinami harishti tat dhanam shanai. Where Sri Krishna himself is telling, if I give my special mercy to anyone, then I will take away all of their wealth. And in this condition, they will become helpless and rejected by their family members. Uh, and then they will completely surrender to me. So, when our Srila Prabhupada read this verse in his early householder years, he became frightened. But later on, when he renounced his household life, uh, and he came to Mathura, and he came to Keshav Chikodiyamat, by the uh, invitation of our Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, then at that time he told his story to him. Yes, yes. Actually, Gurudev went, found out that he was staying in Mathura near to Vishravgat, renting one room, and when he heard this, he went there personally with Brahmachari and told him, Why you are staying here? You cannot stay here. You are like our father. You must come and live with us. And he said, No, 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 I will stay here. Sometimes I will come. No, 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 you must come. And then he instructed the Brahmachari, Here, take his things, pack up his things. And by force, he brought our Srila Prabhupada to Shikesha Jigodi Mas. There he began to live. Uh, Srila Gurudev describes how they lived together so blissfully uh, and so simple. And they used to always talk, so, so many intimate discussions. And Srila Prabhupada told his story to Srila Gurudev that I was afraid. Uh, Krishna uh, gave me this inspiration that this verse would come true in my life. And I was afraid of this, but now I see that it has come on my head. All my wealth, all my endeavors have failed, and now I have come here. And Srila Gurudev, he would encourage that our Srila Prabhupada would write articles for the Bhagavad Patrika, and they would preach, Shil, Shil, uh, our Srila Prabhupada would give classes, there in Mathura, many intelligent persons would come, and Sri Gurudev would encourage him that you are so qualified, you are such an exalted personality, uh, and you are so dear and intimate disciple of Srila Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. He has given you this mission to preach in the Western world. You must take sannyas, you must take renounced order. And again and again he was pressing him. And then one day Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj came to visit Keshav Jigodi Mat. And at that time, our Srimad Narayan Maharaj approached his Guru Maharaj and requested him, you please try to tell him to take sannyas. So then he had very intimate discussions, Param Gurudev, with our Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. They spoke together and he told him that our Guru Maharaj has given you this mission to preach to the whole world and to give these books in English language to the whole world. You must do this. You must carry out this mission. <clears throat> and in order to do this, you must take sannyas. It is not possible unless you take sannyas. So finally, even he needed a little bit more coaxing. And one other god brother, at that time his name was Sri Shripad Sanatan Prabhu. He was 90 years old. And he told to uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, he told to him, oh, if you, if you will take sannyas, then I will also take sannyas. So then, uh, at that time, he finally agreed, yes, I will take renounced order. So in this way, Param Gurudev, our Srila uh, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, received this name from Param Gurudev and received the sannyas mantra from him and received this divine inspiration and Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj later told that actually my Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, actually he gave me sannyas through this God brother. His mercy flowed through this personality. So in this way, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj now set himself to the mission of giving this knowledge to the English speaking world and he began to live shortly after that in Brindavan Dham and renting one room in Gopal, one temple near Jamuna and later on moving to Sri Sri Radha Damodar temple at the Lotus Sea 
feet of Srila Jiva Goswami, Srila Rupa Goswami, and praying and meditating that this mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu somehow they will give him the mercy, the empowerment. Even he used to wake in the middle of the night and weeping and weeping in front of the Samadhi of Srila Bhakti of Srila Rupa Goswami, he would sweep like sweeping in the kunja in a very menial, humble way and crying out, Hey Rupa, Hey Rupa, Hey Jiva, Hey Jiva, how will I do it if you don't give me your mercy, if you don't give me your mercy, weeping and weeping night after night and praying like this. And our Gurudev, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj used to come and visit him there and he saw how he was living as a pure Nishkinshan Rupa Nuga Vaishnava completely renounced, having nothing at all, very, very austere, and constantly using his little old typewriter, and now translating and typing Srimad Bhagavatam in English language, and giving his Bhaktivedanta purports, and going to Delhi back and forth, back and forth, and somehow or other managing to print three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam. And now he had to somehow find his way to the western countries. But he was penniless, like a beggar. And somehow Krishna arranged that one wealthy lady in Bombay, who owned a steamship navigation company, uh, she agreed, yes, okay, I will give you passage to America, but you are very old, why do you want to go? You may die in the journey. And he said, no, my Guru Maharaj has ordered me, I must do this. So with great determination, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj went to Calcutta and the day before he left for Calcutta, he went to Sri Shantipur, the headquarters of Sri Advaita Acharya, who began the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu before the birth of Mahaprabhu. And he prayed at the lotus feet of Sri Advaita Acharya. He prayed at the lotus feet of Panchatattva. Please empower me, please empower me, weeping and weeping and weeping. And the next day he boarded the steamship Jaladuta. What is the meaning of Jaladuta? Water messenger. What kind of messenger was traveling on this ship? What kind of message was he bringing to the world? The greatest message in the history of the earth planet, in the history of the universe, was traveling in this personality, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. And on this Jaladuta, he wrote his prayer. Actually, he had heart attacks for so many days. And he wrote this prayer, a prayer to the lotus feet of Krishna. And he begged Sri Krishna, Krishna Tava Punya Habe Bhai, E Punya Karibe Jabe, Radharani Kushi Habe, Dhruva Ati Boli Toma Atai. Oh, my dear brother, Oh Krishna, I emphatically say to you, you will obtain your good fortune from the Supreme Lord Krishna only when Srimati Radharani becomes pleased with you. Here in this prayer, he revealed his divine relationship as Rupa Nuga Vaishnava. Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Maharaj heard this prayer and he said, yes, yes, he was telling Krishna Oh Krishna, you will obtain your good fortune. Now I am going by the order of my Guru Maharaj to the western countries. And I am completely helpless. I have no power, no Shakti, but you should help me to do this. So therefore I am telling you, you will obtain your good fortune if you help me. Because who am I? I am the servant of Nainamani Manjari dear most servitor of Shrimati Radhika <clears throat> and if you help me Shrimati Radhika will be pleased with you <laughs> so in this prayer from the core of his heart he said Sri Siddhanta Saraswati Sachi Sutta Priyati Krishna Sevai Jar Tulanai Say, say, Mahanta Guru, Jagatair Madhe Guru, Krishna Bhakti Dei Thai Thai. That great Guru, Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is very dear to Lord Gauranga, the son of Mother Sachi, 
He is unparalleled in His service to the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. He is that great saintly spiritual master who bestows intense devotion to Krishna at different places throughout the world. Tar itcha balavanta paschatyete tan tan hoi jate goram geranam prithivite nagaradi asamudra nadanadi sakale hoi krishna nam By his strong desire, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, the holy name of Lord Garanga will spread throughout all the countries of the Western world. In all the cities, towns, and villages, on the earth, from the oceans, seas, rivers, and streams, everyone will chant the holy name of Krishna. Tahale Ananda Hai, Tabe Hai Digvijai, Chaitanya Kripa Atishai, Maya Dushna Jagaduki, Jagate Sabai Suki, Vaishnava Nitsha Purina Hoi. As this vast mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu conquers all directions, a flood of transcendental ecstasy will cover the land. When all the sinful, miserable living entities become happy, then the Vaishnava's desire is fulfilled. Say Karja Jay Koribari, Akya Jali Dilomari, Jokya Nahi, Adina Hi, Tai Se Tomar Kripa, Vahi Techi Anurupa, Aji Tu Aji Numi Sabar Praveen. Although my Guru Maharaj ordered me to accomplish this mission, I am not worthy or fit to do it. I am very fallen, very insignificant. Therefore, O oh Lord, now I am begging for your mercy, so that I may become worthy, for you are the wisest and most experienced of all. Tomar se shakti pere, kuru seva e vastu mile, jivan sarta jadi hole, se se seva paile, tahale suki hole, tava sangha bhakya te miloi. If you bestow your power, then by serving the spiritual master, one can attain the absolute truth. One's life becomes successful. And if that service is obtained, then one becomes happy and gets your association due to good fortune. Then he quoted this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam from Prahlad Maharaj, 7th Canto, Evam Janam Nipatitam Prabhava Vikupe Kama Vikama Manuya Prabhatam Prasangat Kritvat Pasat Surarsina Bhagavan Grihita Soham Katam Nuvishraje Tava Vridya Seva My dear Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, because of my association with material desires one after another, I was gradually falling into a blind well full of snakes, following the general populace. But your servant, Narada Muni, kindly accepted me as his disciple and instructed me how to achieve his transcendental position. Therefore, my first duty is to serve him. How could I leave his service? To be more chirsati, Bulia Maya Radi, Kaya Chinjatma Jatmantare, Aji Puna E Sujo, Jati Hoi Joka Jo, Tabe Pari Tuhe Mili Pari. O Lord Krishna, you are my eternal companion. Forgetting you, I have suffered the kicks of Maya birth after birth. If today the chance to meet you occurs again, then I will surely be able to rejoin you. Tomar Vilane Bhai, Abar Se Sukhapai, Gora Gocharane Guri Deen Bhor, Katamane Chutachuti, Bane Kai Lutaputi, Se Deen Kabe Hare Mor. Oh, my dear friend, in your company I will experience great joy once again. 
In the early morning, I will wander about the coward pastures and fields. Running and frolicking in the many forests of drudge, I will roll on the ground in spiritual ecstasy. Oh, when will that day be mine? Aji sei subidane toma sparana bela, baro asha dakilam tai, ami toma nityadas, tai koi eta ash, to me vina anya gati nai. Today, today that remembrance of you came to me in a very special way. Because I have great longing, I call unto you. I am your eternal servant, and therefore I desire your association so much. O Lord Krishna, except for you, Except for you, <clears throat> there is no other means of success. So in this prayer, He came to the West and he prayed at Boston Harbor to be empowered by Krishna. When Srila Bhakti Raksha, Srila Maharaj, he heard this prayer. Then he told, he said that Bhakti Ganta Swami Maharaj. Pray so helplessly. He prayed so helplessly and he made himself so devoid of any other desire. Thank you. 
Prabhupada in the Western world, Srimati uh, Shambhara, to come and offer her most humble pranams and push to the lotus feet of Shri Oh my God.